Dragon Castle. This is an abstract game inspired by Mahjong. It's pretty much a Mahjong variant. The box is not very sturdy. Make sure that you do not store it under a pile of Fantasy Flight games with those, those heavy games with very sturdy boxes or this box is gonna get squashed. But Box aside, the other components in the box are absolutely top-notch. As I said, it's a Mahjong variant, so you will find a large set of those beautiful white uh, plastic tiles that you see in Mahjong. Um, I played real Mahjong only once and might have been some 15 years ago, so I don't remember all that much. Pretty much all I know about Mahjong these days comes from uh, from the video games based on it that I played in the arcades back in the day and from time to time I still play uh, on airplanes. So that, that's where you find those games these days. Um, Dragon Castle, a variant of that idea. Yes, you're taking tiles, you're making pairs and taking tiles from a central area, but then here there is another element. You're not just disassembling stuff, but then you're using those tiles to build something else. With a little bit of a theme attached to it, but it's this is an abstract game. I would say it's such an abstract game that a little bit of theme that it's in there, it doesn't feel like pasted on. It doesn't really get to the point of being pasted on, and precisely because of that, it doesn't bother me. It precisely because of that, it feels like a decoration, not like, well, they made an attempt to make us believe that there was a theme and they failed. No. They added a little bit of a, of a thematic flavor, you're building other stuff. It's a completely abstract game and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, especially when the components are as interesting and attractive as, as Majon tiles are. Dragon Castle. Ugh, this is a heavy box. Let me show how the game works. The game revolves around a set of Majon tiles that are placed in a specific configuration at the beginning of the game. You shuffle them together so that the position of each tile in the configuration is random, but the configuration itself in general is agreed on by the players before the game starts. This is the recommended basic setup for two players, there are the recommended basic setups for other numbers of players. In this setup, for example, we have a central area with stacks of three tiles surrounded by stacks of two tiles and in turn they are surrounded by single tiles. They and We can think of this composition as divided in three floors, so the top floor, middle floor and bottom floor. There are also many other possible configurations suggested in the rulebook and they will play very differently, so great replay value here. Thinking, uh, thinking of var about variety and replay value, there are also other two factors that will change from game to game. In each game you will draw a card from this deck and that will give an extra way of scoring points at the end of the game. And these are very important, they definitely affect uh, strategy, the players will play in different ways, trying to build different things in order to maximize the points that they can score from this variable victory condition, that's pretty much what it is, or I should say scoring condition. And then each game there will also be one of these cards available, which is randomly drawn, which gives the players some special power. Each card allows the players to break the rules of the game in some way. There is a cost to pay, you will have to discard a tile from your personal area to activate that effect, but then, then you can do that. And sometimes actually that is also useful because it does allow you to discard a tile from your, from your play area in case you don't want it and we'll see how that works later. So between variable setup, variable scoring conditions and variable powers and different rules, and again they do affect gameplay quite a bit, you have almost like a game center, you know when you when you go to those stores that have like there are 15 games in this box and those games are usually basic traditional ones here you have I don't know I'm not very good with the number of things but you have a ton of different games based on the same idea because playing with these two cards and a different configuration trust me it's almost a different game from playing with these two or these two so great value here now, how about the gameplay itself? As we said, you will have a personal board here, which is where you will place the tiles that you collect from the main board. When it is your turn to go, you must take one of three actions, you cannot pass. 
An action could be to simply discard a tile from the top floor, say I'm gonna discard this one because I really don't like it at all, and take a victory point. It's a little bit of a desperate thing to do, but I mean, under some circumstances it may have its, its role. Another action you can take is to take a tile from the top floor and also to collect a shrine. These shrines, you store them in your play area, as we will as we will see later, and you use them when you build stuff with the tiles that you collected. Also, as your action for the turn, you can choose to take two tiles, as long as one of them is from the top floor and the other one can be from anywhere. In this case, the two tiles must be exactly identical. For example, this one is on the top floor, this one is somewhere else, and they are identical, five of bamboo, and I can take them. Another rule that, that applies to every tile that you remove from there is that a tile that you take or you remove must have at least one of its long edges open, available, visible. Um, available or open, visible, doesn't really matter. So for example this one, uh, I can take these two because both this one here and this one here have an available open edge. I wouldn't be able to take this tile here because both of its long edges have other tiles adjacent to it. But for example, like maybe I can take this one. Yeah, look at that. Maybe another player takes these two because they're identical and they have open edges. And now this one is available for someone to take it and they could take it this one and pair it with that one. So taking two tiles seems very profitable, but it's not just about what you take, about how many you take, but also about uh, what you take. Tiles come in different types, and I'll show you from the rule book. That's probably the easiest way to show you that we have three categories based on professions, the faction tiles, the merchants, the soldiers, and the farmers. And then we have seasons, winds, and dragons. As you can see, they have different symbols in them. When you take them from the main area, they need to match each other exactly. Belonging to the same type is not enough. They have to show exactly the same image as I as I showed you. When you place them on the board, uh, there will be rules that are triggered by uh, the fact, by, by tiles being of the same type, not necessarily uh, having exactly the same symbol. When you receive tiles, you immediately place them in your personal play area, as you can see it has a grid here. You can place them any way you want, you place them face up, but the only restriction at this point is that uh, they may not be on top of other face-up tiles. You can place a tile pretty much on the second floor only if the tile or tiles underneath it are face down. And let's see how that works, how you, how you place tiles face down. Let me just grab some tiles from the main area. When you place tiles, again, you can place them any way you want as long as it's not on top of face-up tiles. When you take tiles, if by adding a new tile you form a group of at least four tiles of the same type and a group means tiles that are adjacent to each other orthogonally, then you must, it's not an option, you must consolidate that group. For example, right now, when we're talking about the merchants, look at the merchants, I don't have any group of merchants, which is five or more. There are two, two, and one. But then I take this tile from the board, now I have that group there, which is uh, more than four, four or more. I need to consolidate it, and when I consolidate, a group, I take all of the tiles in that group and I place them face down, which means that now when I take other tiles later in the game, I can, if I so wish, place them there. And uh, when you are consolidating tiles and looking at the adjacent tile, you're looking bird eye view. It doesn't matter if they are in different um, different levels. For example, here this is level one, level two. If I place this one here or here 
level doesn't matter then I consolidate them when I consolidate a group of tiles I also get the option of adding shrines to my board if I collected them be, um, beforehand if they're here in my personal area then I can move them from my personal area to the board the number of tiles that can move there depends on the type of symbol that I'm consolidating. If I'm consolidating factions, I can take a tile from there and place it on any one. So I can take a shrine from there and I can take place it on any one tile that I just consolidated. Suppose when I consolidated those merchants, I could have taken that shrine from there. If I'm consolidating winds or seasons like I did here, if I have two I can choose to place two again in the areas that I just consolidate them just like so if I'm consolidating a group of dragons that means four or more dragons then I console I also can place two and I take a victory a victory point a victory point tile why are shrines important? Because at the end of the game, each shrine which is on a single tile, such as this one, will be worth a victory point. Each tile on a or each shrine on a stack of two will be worth two victory points, and each shrine on a stack of three will be worth three victory points. When players are taking tiles from the central area, there will be a time where level 3 and level 2 will be depleted. There will only be tiles left on the first floor. When that happens, a new option becomes available, a new action. The players can choose to take a dragon tile from this area and that is worth two victory points. The number of dragons that are available there depends on the number of players. If a player takes a dragon which is placed during setup on top of this commission mark, then you have one last round so that all players have all the same numbers of rounds, they win the same number of times in the game, and then at the point you score, you score points. The game may also be over if there are no tiles left uh, to take from the central area. At that point you score victory points that come from these tiles that you may have collected, victory point tiles that you may acquire during the game, other victory points that you may acquire based on the variable victory condition, there's a very powerful one, can give you a ton of points. Um, victory points that come from the shrines, that is when you score them, and at the end of the game, at that point, the player with the highest total is the winner of the game. I like this game a lot, I really like it a lot. I play a lot of games and I like a lot of the games that I play and I like a lot of the games that I review. People sometimes complain, too many positive video reviews. Well, to start with, I only play games that I think I will like. There's a selection there. And so chances that I will like the games that I play and therefore I will make positive reviews are, are high. From time to time, however, there are games that stand out from the pack, from the pack of already, on average, good games that I get to play. And this is one of those games. This is one of those games that I was like, wow, there is just more here than meets the eye than I expected when I read the rules and I expected as I was playing the first game, as I started discovering new elements of, of the strategy, new nuances. It just stands out. This has to be one of the best games that I played in a long time. We are towards the end of 2017. I have no problem saying this is one of the games that I enjoyed the most in 2017. Because it is so simple, so linear, so intuitive, based on, on very known mechanics on top of that, but even if you didn't know them, it's so easy to figure them out, to learn them, and gameplay is so sophisticated, gameplay is so subtle. And you cannot just get enamored with one or two basic ideas because with the variable scoring and the variable um, and the variable abilities each game, you're almost playing different games. You can just use the algorithm every time. Sometimes the final score will give you a ton of points if you simply have a certain type of tile face up. Then I don't care about the general configuration. I'm just trying to score as much as I can, stack so three, uh, three tiles with a shrine on top, and make sure that you don't get that tile that will score you a ton and make sure that I get it. Other times it is about how you um, lay 
a layout, uh, how you create a, a layout for your configuration. It is about shrines being not too high or being very high or being next to each other. There are just so many variables that uh, will cause completely different uh, approaches, completely different approaches. In general, there is again one very general idea which is get the good tiles and don't let other people get the good tiles. Um, but that is also very situational because if you start the building using farmers and I started using, I started building using winds. Now, if I can prevent you from getting a lot of farmers, I can delay as much as possible the moment where you'll consolidate what you are been trying to build. Uh, that of course damages you. Uh, but of course, as I do so, as I try maybe to get farmers or not to free the blocks that will give you the things um, that you need, then at the same time, I'm also trying to still pursue my objectives, my interests. Um, that indirect interaction is something that surprised me pleasantly. It felt like incredibly interactive. I mean, pretty much you could see that around the table, everybody was thinking about what they wanted to do and what everybody else wanted to do. I knew what Bob's objectives were and how I should try to get in the way. I knew what the other players were trying to do and I was trying to keep all these things in mind. In a certain sense, it reminded me in the sense of photosynthesis. We're always thinking a couple of turns ahead and it's, again, it's a very simple game that just Open, it's a bottom that opens up to one abyss of depth after the other, more and more depth, more and more nuances, more and more interesting situations. Uh, it almost felt like the game and the meta game. I think that he's thinking that I'm thinking. Uh, almost, I wouldn't say became prominent, but it had a big role and yet it did not interfere with, with gameplay proper because I wanted to scroll the points and I was trying to figure out what everybody was trying to do. There's even a, a push your luck element, although there's absolutely no luck whatsoever after the for, after the, recent, the initial setup. Uh, almost a push your luck element because if I see that you're involved in your strategy and thinking about a certain thing, then maybe I will build a bunch of those uh, incomplete sets and then hope that a tile that allows me to consolidate them all will show up and then I'm scoring a lot of points. When you consolidate sets, you also score points based on that, not just, you don't just get to play shrines. It's a push your luck thing, or to say push your, your, the other player's attention element, because of course if you see that, then if you see that by not giving me a certain piece, by not allowing me access to a certain piece, you're blocking me a huge consolidation, then maybe you'll spend a turn just taking that one piece which is useless to you, and a shrine, and then later you dump that, that useless piece to you to activate the special action for that game. So there is that push your luck, uh, it feels like push your luck, although functional it is, push your understanding of what your opponent knows about what you're trying to do. Uh, incredibly fluid, incredibly organic, and again, every game is just so different. You're, you don't have to relearn the rules because they're always the same, there's just one rule that changes every game, but you have to relearn the strategy. And if, I, you know, for casual gamers, that is always a minus. Uh, they, casual gamers don't like to learn new rules and they like to fall in love with one strategy they implement it every time, there isn't too much thinking going on. But of course, uh, serious players, uh, committed gamers, hobby gamers, Figuring out a strategy, seeing the trees and seeing how the trees at a certain point click and become the forest, that is part of the intellectual joy of playing games. And this game will give you that all the time because with different initial configurations of the board, different scoring conditions, uh, extra rules, and different ways your, 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 your friends are going to approach the situation, that is going to present you every time with new, fresh, interesting riddles and puzzles. I love this game. The fact that it looks incredibly pretty at the level of every single component. The fact that the rules uh, will mm, make you position the components on your board in a way that will, will give you a certain harmony. There's a certain compositional principle. The rules, so the scoring incentives uh, will, of course, again, give a certain 
a certain compositional harmony, a certain visual aesthetic quality to the to the way that you place your components on your board. So again, it's it's an even an aesthetically pleasing experience at the level of the single component and at the level um, of how gameplay influences the, the, the composition, the, the placement of the components. I, I, I can't think of a thing that I don't like about this game. I like the, the play the play quality, the intellectual challenges, the interactions around the table. Hey, this may look like I go, you go, but this has to be uh, one of the most interactive, if indirectly interactive games that I played in a while. Of course, with the exclusion of war games that is all about. I destroy your stuff and you break my stuff. But uh, out of that, there is this very interesting interaction. So everything I like in a game is here. Beautiful components, uh, interesting, intriguing gameplay, which changes every time, which presents me with all sorts of puzzles and a high degree of interaction around the table. I like Dragon Castle a lot. And I said this game being a game that really will hit the table as often as I can get it on the table. Because, also because, yes, um, I can play with a large number of people. As I said, maybe the casual gamer will not want to relearn the game every time, but I can get casual players to play it at least once and to learn the games and to learn that specific configuration. And worse come to absolute worse, then we play without the available conditions, without those cards. And it's still a very good game. The game, however, really shines, really explodes, bursts out of the box, breaks from the pack when you add those variable conditions for scoring and for and for the actions that you have. Other games do that, Sagrada does that. But to me, the degree that those variable elements impact the design and add flavor and interest into the design here is a whole different level. It goes much deeper and is much more effective and, and much more engaging than in Sagrada or in other, in other games. And you know that I love Sagrada if you watch my video for that one. It is just that this game, Dragon Castle, is, is something else. It's a game on a completely different level. Sometimes a game comes out that really, wow, is, is different. Again, it's its own mini universe. And Dragon Castle just so happens, in my opinion, to be one such game. Some games I like, some games I love, and some games leave me in awe. And this belongs to that category, the latter category. Just a game that is awesome in the, in the traditional, almost etymological sense. I was so pleased and happy every second I was playing this game. Even now that I'm talking about it, you may have spotted I'm getting more and more excited. I feel like, okay, where, where's everybody? Okay, let me call somebody. I need to play this game because Dragon Castle is just very good. Let me call Bob and see if Bob or Sam can play this game this afternoon because it's that good. Dragon Castle, not just a game, but in my opinion, a truly exceptional game.